Today we can use AI to write poetry, um, compose music, uh, write computer programs. Very quickly we can end up in a place where machines are far more capable than ours is. I think solving this problem is of critical importance if we want life on Earth to go well. The danger of AI is much greater than the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. Current worries that I have are something else at a level far beyond anything we're prepared for. And I don't think that gets enough attention. Once humans develop artificial intelligence, humans would be superseded and could spell the end of the human race. Artificial intelligence, AI, has been making headlines for years now. But do you understand the real reason why AI is dangerous? We're entering a time of great uncertainty where we're dealing with kinds of things we've never dealt with before. It's as if aliens had landed, but we didn't really take it in because they speak good English. Having been intrigued by AI and covering its advances since 2019 through my Instagram stories, I decided to deepen my understanding on the technical aspects of AI in November. This led me to obtain a professional certification in computer science for artificial intelligence from Harvard X. You can find a list of all the resources I used to reach these conclusions in the description below. In this video, we'll dive deep into the world of AI, explore its potential existential risk, and help you get a better grasp on this complex topic. Let's get started. What you see in the media is 5% of what is really out there. The public is not aware of all this. The people who are into this are really scared, and we should all be. we first need to have an idea of how it's built. The distinction between traditional computer programs and AI models lies in the approach to instructing the machine. Instead of telling the machine how to do it by giving it the knowledge, you show the machine what you want it to do and get the machine to learn it. This process is known as machine learning. Somehow, in ways that we cannot quite explain in any meaningful sense, these enormous networks of neurons can learn and they ultimately produce intelligent behavior. A common type of AI is a neural network, which is designed to mimic the brain. There are three main stages in the process. We first have the input. Second, we have the hidden layer. There, it actually learns to recognize patterns. At last, we have the output, which is the system's best guess. Now, the magic of AI is that it can improve its accuracy by adjusting the nodes in the hidden layer. You could provide various types of input to the network, such as images, videos, or even sound of your voice. This data will then pass through the connections between the different layers. Over time, these connections will change, and this is the training or learning process for the network. In the end, it will produce a classification where the network informs you of what it believes it is hearing or seeing, or whatever kind of result that you put in in the first place. There are numerous methods for training these neural networks. However, the basic concept typically revolves around feedback. You input data into the network and observe how it classifies the information. Initially, the network may not be very accurate and might make mistakes. You then provide feedback on the errors and the extent of the errors. In response, the network will adjust its connections until it performs the task correctly. GPT-3, 3.5 had uh, 175 billion. Problems. I heard GPT-4 had 100 trillion. Systems like GPT-4, with 100 trillion of these nodes, makes it completely impossible to understand why and how it gave a certain response. I asked Microsoft, does this system now have internal goals of its own that it's pursuing? And they said, we haven't the faintest idea. I cannot emphasize enough that we do not understand these systems. And it's not clear if we ever can. You don't fully understand. You can't quite tell why it said this or why it got wrong. You don't fully understand how it works, and yet you've turned it loose on society? Theory of mind is the ability to like model what somebody else is thinking. It's what enables strategic thinking. In 2018, uh, GPT had no theory of mind. In 2019, barely. In 2020, the strategy level of a four-year-old. By 2022, January, seven-year-old. And by November, almost the strategy level of a nine-year-old. Now here's the really creepy thing. We only discovered that AI had grown this capability last month. It had been out, what, two years? Two years, yeah. AI misalignment is a major concern. It refers to the situation where AI's actions or their goals are not aligned with our intentions or our values as a human. This can lead to unintended consequences. A famous example is Tay Tweets. Microsoft briefly unveiled a chatbot on Twitter named Tay. 
The idea was she would teach herself how to behave by chatting with young users on Twitter. Almost immediately, Microsoft pulled the plug on it, and for the exact reasons that you are thinking. She started out tweeting about how uh, humans are super, uh, and she's really into the idea of National Puppy Day. And within a few hours, you can see uh, she took on a rather offensive racist tone, a lot of messages about genocide and the Holocaust. Yep. That happened in less than 24 hours. Tay went from tweeting, hello world, to Bush did 9-11 and Hitler was right. Meaning she completed the entire life cycle of your high school friends on Facebook in just a fraction of the time. The problem is though, working out exactly how or why an AI has got something wrong can be very difficult because of that black box issue. It often involves having to examine the exact information and parameters that it was fed in the first place. In one interesting example, when a group of researchers tried training an AI program to identify skin cancer, they fed it 130,000 images of both diseased and healthy skin. Afterwards, they found it was way more likely to classify any image with a ruler in it as cancerous, which seems weird until you realize that medical images of malignancies are much more likely to contain a ruler for scale than images of healthy skin. They basically trained it on tons of images like this one. So the AI had inadvertently learned that rulers are malignant. <laughs> and unfortunately, these problems have not been fully solved in this latest wave of AI. Another example is when AI is used for hiring. A problem is that our own biases, biases that come towards gender or race, are trained inside of this AI system. The company has now abandoned an AI recruiting tool after discovering that the program was biased against women. The system essentially started discounting any time someone had graduated from a female college or a woman's college or had the word women's in their resume, like the uh, captain of the women's chess team, for example. But even with time, the AI alignment problem seems to be really difficult. Oh yeah, but it's also the most worthy problem, most important problem for humanity to ever solve. Because if we solve that one, Lex, that aligned AI can help us solve all the other problems. If humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, we should do so very, very carefully. This is the most important thing that we could possibly do. Let's talk a little bit about the intelligence part. Imagine that this is a spectrum of intelligence. Here we have Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking. And then a little bit lower, less intelligence, we have you and me. And then all the way down, we have an ant, for example. When we talk about AGI, artificial general intelligence, we are talking about AI systems that poses the ability to understand, learn, and apply knowledge across a wide range of tasks, exactly like humans do. But it won't stop there. One key factor is the speed of electronic circuits compared to biochemical circuits, like we have in our brains. Electronic circuits function about a million times faster than the ones in our brains. If it runs for a week, for example, it will have processed 20,000 years of human-level intellectual work. This difference in processing speed suggests that once we have achieved that general intelligence, it will probably evolve in super intelligence, and this at a very rapid rate. At that point, it will surpass human intelligence. It will become smarter, way smarter than we are. Nukes don't make stronger nukes, but AI makes stronger AI. It's like an arms race to strengthen every other arms race. So it's an exponential on top of an exponential. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. But teach an AI to fish and it'll teach itself biology, chemistry, oceanography, evolutionary theory, and then fish all the fish to extinction. I just want to name, like, this is a really hard thing to hold in your head. Um, like how fast these exponentials are. AI is solving these tests pretty much as fast as we can create them. It's likely that super intelligent machines will explore this spectrum in ways we can't even imagine. And we have to figure out some way to ensure that the advent of digital super intelligence is one which is symbiotic with humanity. I think that's the single biggest existential crisis that we face and the, and the most pressing one. Why will we even build AGI? We will keep improving our systems because there are still problems that we want to see solved. Think about diseases. We want to find a cure to cancer, Alzheimer, or Parkinson. And by developing smarter and smarter machines, we might actually find these answers. You know how they say there are two certainties in life, right? Death and taxes. Can't we get rid of one of those? See, 100 years ago, life expectancy was only 45. Can you believe that? And then by the 1950s, it was up to 65, and today it's almost 80. Tomorrow, who knows, right? Healthcare has made huge progress. We've eradicated epidemics that used to kill millions, but life is fragile. 
people still get sick or pass away for reasons that may be, should be someday curable. What if we could improve diagnosis? Innovate to predict illness instead of just react to it. AI is changing the way we think about mind and body, life and death, and what we value most. As AI continues to advance, it's likely that we eventually develop artificial general intelligence and super intelligence. However, this also means that we must be prepared to address the potential risk and challenges that come with super powerful technology. When you're talking about super intelligent AI that can make changes to itself, it would seem it seems that we only have one chance to get the initial conditions right. And even then, we will need to absorb the economic and political consequences of getting them right. But the moment we admit that we will improve these systems continuously, and we admit that the horizon of cognition very likely far exceeds what we currently know, then we have to admit that we're in the process of building some sort of God. Now would be a good time to make sure it's a God we can live with. The thing I wanted to add here is this illustration. It illustrates the unknown that lies behind the sanitized public face of AI. The mosque is where the public interacts with and appears aligned. But what lies behind it is still something we can't fully really comprehend. If you know that it's trained on basically the whole world wide web, you also know what kind of disgusting things can be found on the internet. So they also have knowledge of those kind of things. Not only do we not understand how and why a certain model gave a certain answer, but the capabilities that come with training it and that we didn't train it on purpose on, the emergent capabilities, are vast and could have some very serious consequences, like building something that is more intelligent than us without even noticing it. They found theory of mind two months ago, knowing the model already existed two years. That's why this meme is so relatable to what is happening right now in AI. The way OpenAI, for example, limits ChatGPT is not by really aligning it. They put a layer in between it. The capacity is still there. This is an example of how much stuff there is around these models that we still don't understand and we might not ever understand. The problem is that we do not get 50 years to try and try again because the first time you fail at aligning something much smarter than you are, you die. Creating AGI is very hard. But creating AGI that is properly aligned is even harder. There is a lot of progress on the capabilities of AI systems. But the progress on alignment, on the other hand, stays vacant. Here is the worry. Making super intelligent AI is a really hard challenge. Making super intelligent AI that is safe involves some additional challenge on top of that. The risk is that somebody figures out how to crack the first challenge without also having cracked the additional challenge of ensuring perfect safety. Now imagine. What could happen if a super intelligent AI becomes misaligned with our values as humans? If it's smart, it doesn't announce itself. It doesn't tell you that there's a fight going on. It emails out some instructions to one of those labs that'll, that'll synthesize DNA and synthesize proteins from the DNA. And you know, a couple of days later, everybody on Earth falls over dead in the same second. That's the disaster scenario if it's as smart as I am. If it's smarter, it might think of a better way to do things. The potential consequences of misaligned super intelligence are vast and could include anything from manipulation of human behavior to global catastrophes and the extinction of the human race. Since 2001, I have been working on what we would now call the problem of aligning artificial general intelligence. How to shape the preferences and behavior of a powerful artificial mind such that it does not kill everyone. I more or less founded the field. I tried to get this very important project started early so we'd be in less of a drastic rush later. Humanity is not approaching this issue with remotely the level of seriousness that would be required. We are very far behind. If we actually try to do this in real life, we are all going to die. My best bad take is that we need an international coalition banning large AI training runs, including extreme and extraordinary measures to have that ban be actually and universally effective. I say this, not expecting that to actually happen. I say this, expecting that we all just die. But it is not my place to just decide on my own that humanity will choose to die to the point of not bothering to warn anyone. Maybe humanity wakes up one morning and decides to live. Common suggestions like lock it in a box or add a switch to turn it off simply won't work because the fact that it is super intelligent would likely also find a way to bypass these restrictions. We just shut it off. A, this is not necessarily so easy to do if we've grown dependent on the system. Like, where is the off switch to the internet? B, why haven't the chimpanzees flicked the off switch to humanity? Uh, the reason is that we are an intelligent adversary. We can anticipate threats and plan around them, but so could a super intelligent agent, and it would be much better at that than we are. Point is, we should not be confident that we have this under control here. Humanity's first contact with advanced AI was social media. 
and humanity lost. It was sufficient for the ultra primitive and very narrow AI to create a curtain of illusions that increased polarization, it undermined our mental health, and we see millions of people confusing these illusions for reality. Take, for example, US citizens that can no longer agree on who won elections. Because in the past, we did not regulate social technology, for example. And that's how we got Cambridge Analytica and the influence on elections all over the world. And those are just the problems that we can foresee right now. The nature of unintended consequences is they can be hard to anticipate. When Instagram was launched, the first thought wasn't, this will destroy teenage girls' self-esteem. When Facebook was released, no one expected it to contribute to genocide. But both of those things fucking happened. So what now? Well, one of the biggest things we need to do is tackle that black box problem. AI systems need to be explainable, meaning that we should be able to understand exactly how and why an AI came up with its answers. I think it might be very, very close. I don't think the Microsoft paper is totally off when they say that there's some glimmers of AGIs. I wouldn't bet very strongly against it happening very soon. We are currently witnessing a dangerous AI race where profits are being put before the research on safety and alignment of AI, as winning this race is to win the world. What would the Russians or the Chinese do if they heard that some company in Silicon Valley was about to deploy a super intelligent AI? This machine would be capable of waging war with unprecedented power. Now, this is a winner-take-all scenario. To, to be six months ahead of the competition here is to be 500,000 years ahead at a minimum. Okay, so it seems that, that even mere rumors of this kind of breakthrough could cause our species to go berserk. The existential risk posed by AI, specifically AGI and superintelligence, are a crucial topic that needs more attention. An open letter signed by prominent researchers and thinkers called for a pause in the AI development to address these exact concerns around AGI and superintelligence. The fundamental reason why Eliezer looked so depressed when I last saw him was because he felt there just wasn't enough time. Oh, figure, that not that it was unsolvable. Correct. There's just not enough time. He was hoping that humanity was going to take this threat more seriously so we would have more time, and now we don't have more time. That's why the open letter is calling for more time. If there's ever been a time to pause, it's today. A lot of people have said for many years that there will come a time when we want to pause a little bit. That time is now. As we wrap up this video, I just wanted to share the motivation behind creating it. I saw that the media's lack of understanding and knowledge about the consequences of the ongoing AI race has led to misconceptions among the general public. While the open letter addressing these concerns received worldwide media coverage, there was hardly any mention of AGI and the competition among major corporations, even though these were the primary reasons behind the experts' call for a pause. I don't think the average person yes. playing with AI on his iPhone perceives any danger. It has the potential, uh, how a small one may regard that probability, but it is non-trivial. It has the potential of civilizational destruction. Regulations are really only put into effect after something terrible has happened. If that's the case for AI, and we're only putting regulations after something terrible has happened, it may be too late to actually put the regulations in place. The AI may be in control at that point. You think that's real? It is, it is conceivable that AI could take control and reach a point where you couldn't turn it off and it would be making, making the decisions for people? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, it's, that's, the, that's definitely the, where things are headed. Uh, for sure. Alarm bells should go off when 22 members of the Center of Existential Risk address these concerns. Alarm bells should go off when the inventor, the actual technology behind these AI systems, is addressing these concerns. And alarm bells should go off when 50% of the researchers think AI could cause human extinction. 50% of AI researchers believe there's a 10% or greater chance that humans go extinct from our inability to control AI. Yeah, that would be like if you're about to get on a plane and 50% of the engineers who make the plane say, well, if you get on this plane, there's a 10% chance that everybody goes down. Like, would you get on that plane? But we are rapidly onboarding people onto this plane. It would be the worst of all human mistakes to have ever been made. And we literally don't know how it works and we don't know all the things it will do. And we're, we're putting it out there before we actually know whether it's safe. Nobody understands how modern AI systems do what they do. They are giant inscrutable matrices of floating point numbers that we nudge in the direction of better performance until they inexplicably start working. At some point, the company is rushing headlong to scale AI will cough out something that's smarter than humanity. What happens if we build something smarter than us that we understand that poorly? 
Some people find it obvious that building something smarter than us that we don't understand might go badly. I expect an actually smarter and uncaring entity will figure out strategies and technologies that can kill us quickly and reliably. I am not saying that the problem of aligning superintelligence is unsolvable in principle. I expect we could figure it out with unlimited time and unlimited retries, which the usual process of science assumes that we have. The problem here is the part where we don't get to say, ha ha, whoops, that sure didn't work. We do not get to learn from our mistakes and try again because everyone is already dead. Unfortunately, traditional media and online creators often focus on less imminent threats, like misinformation or the loss of jobs, rather than understanding the magnitude of the consequences that could come when reaching AGI. I'm not really all that worried about the short-term stuff. Like, narrow AI is not a species-level risk. It will result in dislocation, lost jobs, and sort of better weaponry and that kind of thing. But it is not a fundamental species-level risk, uh, whereas digital superintelligence is. The man widely seen as the godfather of artificial intelligence has quit his job at Google, warning of the dangers of AI. Dr. Jeffrey Hinton's pioneering research on deep learning and neural networks has paved the way for current AI systems like ChatGPT. There have been some whistleblowers who have been warning about the dangers of AI over the past few years, was forced out of Google for voicing his concerns. Looking back on it, do you wish that you had stood behind these whistleblowers more? They were rather different concerns from mine. Their concerns aren't as existentially serious as the idea of these things getting more intelligent than us and taking over. And I'm just a scientist who suddenly realized that these things are getting smarter than us. And I want to sort of blow the whistle and say, we should worry seriously. Take the existential risk seriously, mm -hmm. as I now do. I used to think it was way off, but I now think it's serious and fairly close. The digital intelligence can then absorb everything people ever wrote in a fairly slow way, which is what ChatGPT has been doing. But then it can start getting direct experience of the world and learn much faster. It may keep us around for a while to keep the power stations running, but after that, maybe not. These things will have learned from us how to manipulate people, right? And they'll be, if they're much smarter than us, they'll be very good at manipulating us. You won't realize what's going on. You'll be like a two-year-old and you'll be that easy to manipulate. And so even if they don't, can't directly pull levers, they can certainly get us to pull levers. Mm -hmm. It turns out if you can manipulate people, you can invade a building in Washington without ever going there yourself. People are just blind to this danger. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sounding the alarm and saying we have to worry about this. Well, a few days ago, Microsoft, the lead investor of the company behind GPT-4, releases a paper on GPT-4 titled Sparks of Artificial General Intelligence. It is now more important than ever that governments, media and the general public are becoming aware of the real danger AI is currently posing. It's funny to see how Hinton literally says that he is not trying to warn for the misinformation, not trying to warn for the jobs, although they are real problems, that he's trying to warn about something else, an existential risk, the risk of superintelligence, that the machines are getting smarter than us. There are quite a few different risks. There's the risk of producing a lot of fake news. There's the risk of encouraging polarization, the risk of putting people out of work. And then there's the risk that I want to talk about. Many other people are talking about those other risks. I want to talk about a different risk, which is the risk of superintelligent AI. The Liberté completely missed the point. The models that we have currently have are pretty niche and new to say it like that. All previous models were more narrow AI, meaning that they were trained to do one task. Also code-wise and how they were built was easy to explain. Models that we currently have, they are not just built with some lines of code. It was compared to uh, washing machines and the buttons on them. If you are comparing current AI models like that, you're going to have a general public with people who are very vulnerable. It is important for all of us to stay informed and engaged in this conversation as the development of AI and superintelligence will likely have a profound impact on our future. If things turn out okay and that people a million years from now look back at this century and it might well be that they say that the one thing we did that really mattered was to get this thing right. My worst fears are that we cause significant harm to the world. I think that could happen in a lot of different ways. I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. There are a few interesting things, but for me, the most important things were that the first good thing, this is not something that I'm making up. Like this is a real issue that others are also sharing. And Sam Altman is sharing that fear that is currently getting closer and closer. As we read between the lines, when you see this fragment. Having talked to you, 
privately. You I know agree. how much I care. Uh, I agree that you care deeply and intensely, but also that prospect of increased danger or risk resulting from even more complex and capable AI mechanisms certainly may be closer than a lot of people appreciate. It looks like Sam has been warning senators privately. And apart from that, he really thinks we're getting really, really close. The past few months, everything that talks about AGI or the existential risk was put on the down low when it comes to open AI, employees talking about it, because yeah, investors and stuff like that. It was really remarkable how non-vocal that they were. But for Sam to bring up the subject himself, to ask like, yeah, we, we just talked about these problems, but like, let's discuss this problem because this problem is way heavier and we still have no solution for that. We spent most of the time today on current risk and I think that's appropriate and I'm very glad we have done it. As these systems do become more capable, and I'm not sure how far away that is, but maybe not super far, I think it's important that we also spend time talking about how we're going to confront those challenges. But then the, <laughs> the reaction from the Senate, the moment that he quotes Sam on what his biggest fear is, he then shows that he still didn't have any idea about what Sam was talking and has no clue what the consequences are when we're going to reach AGI or super intelligence. I think you have said, uh, in fact, and I'm going to quote, development of superhuman machine intelligence is probably the greatest threat to the continued existence of humanity, end quote. Uh, you may have had in mind the effect on, on jobs, which is really my biggest nightmare. That jobs would be his worst nightmare. I don't know what kind of my nightmares he has, but like... My point is pretty simple. And I agree with Stuart Russell on this. You should not deploy systems whose internal principles of operations you do not understand that may or may not have their own internal goals that they are pursuing, and that could show sparks of AGI. It's incredibly irresponsible to do so. Built the giant black box, uh, trained to predict the next word, and got all these emergent properties, and oops, it did this. I, I think this is a very powerful wake-up call, and I, anyone watching this who's not scared, if there's a silver lining to um, what's happening here, even though I think many people would wish it would have been rolled out more carefully, is that this might be the wake-up call that humanity needed to really stop fantasizing about this being a hundred years off and stop fantasizing about this being completely controllable and predictable because it's so obvious. This is a case where you have a very serious danger to the public. The danger of AI is much greater than the, the, the danger of nuclear warheads by a lot. And nobody would suggest that we allow anyone to just build nuclear warheads if they want. That, that would be insane. So why do we have no regulatory oversight? This is insane. First of all, we have no idea how the current AI models work at all. Nobody has any idea. We do not know how smart these models are. We know that researchers think that there is at least a 10% chance of AI causing human extinction. You think that humanity would be in high gear to prevent the uprising of out-of-control superintelligence. Well, it's not quite like that currently. But hey, we still have time, right? Well, that's also not quite accurate. When papers like AGI are being published and current AI models are basically passing the Turing test, which was originally a benchmark for AGI, and then we can safely assume that we are getting very close to achieving general intelligence. And as we have learned, the transition from AGI to superintelligence will be very fast. Super intelligence isn't a long-term issue. In fact, it's more imminent than challenges like climate change or most people's retirement plans. And we know that leaving this presentation, leaving this room, there's going to be this weird snapback effect that you are going to leave here and you're going to talk to your friends and you're going to read news articles and it's going to be more about AI art and chat GPT bots that said this or that. And you're going to be like, what the hell was, was that presentation I went to even real or is any of this even real? And just want you to notice that effect before it happens because we notice it even in working on this. It's hard to wrap your head around where this all goes.
and you, and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility for it. You stood on the shoulders of geniuses uh, to accomplish something as fast as you could, and before you even knew what you had, you, you patented it. I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't start to think they should. Over the past 38 days, while working on this video that eventually turned out in kind of a mini documentary, I've delved deeper and deeper into the subject. It became increasingly clear that the media's coverage on the open letter, often framed as Elon Musk does X, has been more about marketing to get clicks than about substance. It left me wondering what it would take for journalists to truly listen to what these scientists are saying and to stop making assumptions based upon their perceived notions. Imagine your discoveries became the building blocks for any artificial intelligence model that is currently used. Imagine receiving the Turing Award, a Nobel Prize equivalent for your contributions to the field. Imagine having sold your company for 44 million and becoming vice president of fucking Google and leading the AI team. And now imagine dropping all of that, your job, your life's work, everything, because you see no other way than to sound alarm. And even then, journalists and the media didn't actually listen to what you are saying. Like, I really feel for that guy. Like, how sad is the fact that you're literally the top of your field, you're the best of the best, and once the interview is done, they apparently just didn't listen. It's literally sad. Throughout the process of creating the, this documentary, there have been many moments where I thought, this is it. It's finally gonna happen. It's gonna come on the news and my whole video is gonna be useless because it finally got some media attention. Eliza did a TED talk. We got the Sparks of AGI paper that was released. Yeah, of course, Professor Hinton that resigned at Google. Sam Altman at Congress. However, this still hasn't happened. And it's crucial that we raise awareness about the underreported dangers of artificial intelligence. Comparing current systems to washing machines and that they are simply following following some basic lines of code creates easy targets for anyone who does know how these models work. So let's continue this conversation and work together to better understand potential consequences of AGI for the sake of our own future. God damn it. Oh, fuck it. This is what happens when more intelligent beings are together with less intelligent beings.